What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting handheld that had kind of a lengthy Kickstarter campaign due to supply chain issues and just the fact that, you know, it was created by a really small company who goes by the name Curious Chip. This is the PIP and I had no clue that this even existed until a viewer reached out recently and asked me if I wanted to take a look at the one he just received and I figured it'd be pretty cool to, you know, just make a quick video on. And I'll tell you, if this was released in a timely manner, I think a lot of people would have wanted to get their hands on this unit here. Now, it wasn't specifically designed for retro gaming, but of course we can install emulators on basically anything, and we'll definitely be doing that. We've got these detachable kind of controllers over here on the side, which lead to full-size USB ports. It's got HDMI out, built-in camera, RGB LEDs, and it was really meant to be kind of an educational handheld to learn how to code, make your own games, and applications. I'm pretty sure they had a few different packages listed on their Kickstarter, and with this one we got some alligator clips, micro USB, the handheld itself, and this touch controller. It's pretty cool actually. There's a few different modes. You can set it up for MIDI, keyboard, or even a gamepad, and we've got a couple different touch sensors on the unit itself. Now before we dive a bit deeper, I do want to give you a little bit of a backstory about the PIP itself. So this was a Kickstarter campaign. Like I mentioned, one of my viewers reached out and kindly sent this over so I could take a look at it. It's by a company that goes by Curious Chip, and over on their Kickstarter page, if we uh, take a look at their first update, I believe the campaign was actually created November 17th, 2017. Um, a lot of backers started getting these in 2020, so it was definitely a kind of a drawn out project. And I know when you're a smaller company, it's really hard to get something off the ground like this. And with this, they had 241 backers that pledged a total of 40,000 euro, which isn't a lot of money to get, you know, a project off the ground, especially when it comes to manufacturing, shipping and everything like that. So I'll tell you, I don't think they really uh, made any money on this and they might have not even broke even with, you know, how much it takes to get something like this going. They did have a bunch of updates. But obviously, it did take them a long time to get everything together, and I'll tell you, you know, this was announced uh, November 2017. Even if this was shipping at the end of 2018, I think this would have been an awesome little handheld. Now, this was the first prototype. They haven't even swapped out the picture here for the newer ones, which are a bit sleeker. Still a thick boy, but uh, overall does look a lot better than their initial prototype. So yeah, this is powered by a Raspberry Pi. It's got the Compute Module 3 Plus, and the whole design here was actually put together really nicely. We'll do a teardown by the end of the video, but let's go ahead and boot this thing up. It does have Wi-Fi and a Raspberry Pi camera in the back of the unit. As you can see up front here, we've got this RGB LED array, which allows us to either program or use different applications to kind of access these RGB LEDs. It also works as a battery indicator, and I believe a Wi-Fi strength indicator. It's got a 4-inch IPS touch display. Like I mentioned, it does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, an accelerometer, a single speaker, and a microphone built in. The operating system I have right now is their PIP operating system. I guess that's what they're calling it. There's a few pre-made applications ready to go in here. But uh, yeah, I mean, just taking a look at the unit itself, GPIO up front, these detachable controllers with A, B, X, Y, start, select. We've also got a D-pad here. Round back, we've got our 5 megapixel Raspberry Pi camera, and I'm pretty sure this could be swapped out for another Raspberry Pi camera. It's got a built-in kickstand, and up top, we've got micro USB for charging up the battery, a power button, our shoulder buttons, and a full-size HDMI port, and around the bottom here, micro SD card access and a 3.5mm audio jack. And once you pull off these controllers, two full-size USB ports. You can use these for data or different peripherals if you want to. So I did want to show off some of these pre-installed applications, and there was supposed to be a web interface to allow you to easily create programs to access all of the I.O. on this device, like the RGB LEDs, the GPIO, and even the rear camera, but personally, I can't access it. Not sure if it's up on their website or not, or I'm doing something wrong, but I've tried everything. So the first one I wanted to take a look at was their little uh, LED application. Very simple here. This will allow us to control the RGB LEDs up top. We can control them individually, we can sync them together, we can make them blink. Obviously, very simple application. But the next one I wanted to take a look at was their camera application. So this is just going to access that 5 megapixel Raspberry Pi camera around back. And uh, you can see we've got some different color profiles that we can add to the camera itself. 
And with this application, I haven't found out a way to take pictures or video with it, but you could always program your own. But the last one I wanted to take a look at was their touch piano. This is the one I've personally had the most fun with, and the speaker with the operating system I have right now actually sounds really good, super clean and loud, but when I move over to the next operating system, I just can't control the volume on it. And you know, since the PIP is powered by the Raspberry Pi, there's a lot of different operating systems that we can run on here. Over on their website, they do offer a RetroPie image that's specifically tailored to the controller screen and everything for the PIP. So we can definitely play some of our favorite retro games on this device. And you know, since this is running the Compute Module 3 Plus, we've got access to PS1, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo, FBA, MAME, PC Engine, there's thousands and thousands of retro games that we can run on this device at full speed. So I've loaded up a few here. Obviously, we're running RetroPie right now, and this does have Wi-Fi built in. So I was able to kind of transfer some games over and scrape all of my images. We're going to go with some PlayStation 1 up front, and then we'll just move over to some other ones just to see how it performs. And we'll go with Bloody Roar 2, one of my favorite fighting games. And it is a harder one to emulate on lower end systems when it comes. Fortunately, with this build of RetroPie, I can't find a way to turn the volume up on this device. I know it can go much louder given the uh, other operating system we took a look at. But with this, even from the uh, settings in RetroPie, sound adjustment just isn't working. But yeah, it does handle PlayStation 1 games quite well. And going into it, I knew we'd have a great time with it. There is a hotkey set up here, so uh, the power button up top and the start button bring us right back into emulation station and we can move over to something else. And before I wrap this video up, I did want to take a look at the internals. Pulling the back cover off is pretty easy. We've got four screws. I need to get this Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antenna out of the way. And the camera module itself kind of just sits in here on some pegs. I mean, it's definitely secure once everything's screwed down. And uh, overall, solid build quality. I think they did a great job putting this thing together. And I really can't see where they made money on this from the Kickstarter campaign. Maybe they got a grant somewhere to put something like this together. But uh, overall, just selling the units with as many backers as they had and what was pledged. I'm pretty sure they had to use some money out of their own pocket to finish this whole thing up. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I thought this was cool enough to make a quick video on. And like I mentioned, if this was released in a timely manner, I'm sure a lot of people would have wanted to get their hands on this at the time. Uh, late 2018, we didn't have many great handhelds on the market. And everybody was loving the Raspberry Pi, especially the compute module. If you want to learn a little more, I will leave a link to their website in the description. But if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.